by the way. So, we're, we're gonna read some shit today. We're gonna read some more of this shit. Fuck it. She, like, she sounds like she's freaking out a lot. I, I'd read on murder, but, like, this is, this, this is how you're supposed to really, if you try to kick it out, you just got, those are the pages you want to read. <laughs> Be like, what's your point of murder? Okay, um, you want to talk about memes and psychers and shit? Can I do that? Um... Alright, we can do it that way. Got some water. Uh, we'll take a bong hit. This is like, this is a lot to read. That's six of my pages front and back. It, it's a lot to read. I actually, when I read that, it's actually going to explain the problem with society right now. <laughs> Why we keep dealing with weird shit. <laughs> Alright. Oh, hey. Hey. So we can say we smoked with company. So, you ready? So, um, the, the, this, like, this section is titled The Issues with Mon Calamare and Europa, alright? So, Europa is a habitable world in another solar system. I think it's like 300 times bigger than our Earth. It's going, it, it's, it's, it's rocking out with, um, three-fifths of the Fermi Paradox right now, just for sentient life on it. Uh, let's see now. We, we can see if we can find it. Yeah, Europa. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of the wrong Europa. This shit don't look habitable. This is this this isn't the Europa I'm thinking of. This is this is the Europa on, on Jupiter. All right, that's the still same one, same one, same one. Where was the other one? Cause they just made a new one. Feels bad. Um, see, Europa Moon. Let's go to um. Uh, there's no disambiguation. Uh, damn. No. Damn. Fuck. That's rough, man. That's real rough. All right, let's uh let's try this. Maybe I got the wrong name. Oh, they don't even show it. Damn. Oh, is that the official name? I don't know. There's like, there's, there's a water planet. Um,
All right, fuck it. I could be mistaken. Uh, I'm dude. I'm a fucking psycho. <laughs> All right. So they got like three fifths of the Fermi paradox there. Um, they they were basically getting shit done, and then they had to deal with the space squids. So you had sentient crabs. You had sentient squids. Mon calamari are here, by the way. Like other than the giant mind wrenching squids that are out in space. There's little, like, sentient walker squids around here. It, like, uh, I'm sorry if they're offended, but, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to say eat them <laughs> yet. Um, yeah. And, and, like, and, and there's the equivalent of humans there as far as I'm concerned. So you got the crabs, the squids, and then you got humanish people. It, it's basically like Mon Calamari in Star Wars, because if you know what Mon Calamari is, it's just a water planet, and you got the squids, and then you got the humans that show up there. And then that's it. But, like, they're dealing with other shit now. Um, it's like a Ukraine, Ukraine. Uh, it's mostly water world. Seems as a habitable world for uh, all species that could thrive or at least use water anyway. Um, you, uh, I'll remind you, humans go, like, three days. Like, you go, th try not to drink any water for three days and see how you feel. You can drink some juices if you want, but I bet you you don't drink any water. You feel like a piece of shit. All right, so... The planet is war torn because the sending of space squids, which form a cartel, use drug subversion and mind control in an attempt to control it. Uh, if I had to describe the process, I would say this: um, a, sent a sentient space squid parks out a visible range of the target planet. They proceed to take over viable people of the target species, and then proceed to either guide or weaken the target planet, and then guide into more water as well as a higher population. At which point the squids would come in, harvest, and breed, and then each squid can use one of its tentacles psychically to control at least one sentient agent. So, like, these giant squids in space can use, like, one person as a tentacle and be like, alright, you walk. So, th this is the thing. Those squids are pieces of shit, and ketamine is one of their tools, okay? You, put a, you take ketamine, you start getting cruise controlled because you don't know how to think or move. You let a little somebody into your mind karmically because all your brain function is gone. And now you know you got your moon boots. He hops into your body. You got to learn to walk again, baby, because this is your first time on drugs that shut down every movement in your brain. This is his first time in your body as a squid. Assholes. I, like, uh, there there are per points in period where people just purge out people that do drugs, and um, I I'm not saying that this is gonna be one entirely, but but yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> um, when it comes to the size of these squids, um, think of the adults being like the size of one of Saturn moons, and um. That the conflicts that make sense in a flash note style can be fleshed out further by connecting media to um, connect lore. Like you got um, the the war on Titan could be a small scale engagement, just people versus people who are squitted out. That's it. Like nobody ever explained the war on Titan. Could have been it. Like yeah, dude, don't ever think um, like. As far as we're concerned, uh, we're, we're, Cowboy Bebop's right around the corner for us, in a real way. That's probably, uh, of the anime lifestyles that people could live, that's probably the closest. Gantz is probably the closest on uh, you, you don't know what's going on since, because you don't know what's going on, because you don't have the right. <laughs> but that's it. Um, there, there seems to be a connection between the attack on Titan and the squids. Maybe alternative measures, like the Titan versus the Colossus versus the Easter Island. Like, we like to put big pieces of man up there to be like, yeah, don't come here, there are men here. <laughs> like, the, it, it was something we did. The, um, the Colossus of Rhodes was so cool because it was so articulate, you know? It was a giant statue. Um... <clears throat> With that said, you know, squids or dragons or hydras, but it's relative. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, so now, uh, now as we move on, uh, let's talk about force powers, mutants, and psychers as a planetary means of defense, because we have to take into account a couple of things. Force powers are not telekinesis or telepathy. Force powers is sentient space dust left over from either the Big Bang or gene tampering based on other shit. So that's what we call mitochondrias. Alright? Uh -huh. 
Anyway, um, dude, like this, this is shit I was writing in there. Just kept it going. Fuck it. What is cognitive thought? <clears throat> so anyway, so now as we get into mitochondrions versus psychers versus mutants. Uh, mitochondrions haven't stated on the previous page that the force powers are based on mitochondrions, which I maintain is an accumulation of space dust or benign parasites. The accumulation of which allows to move objects and communicate with other people, at least on a low level, with other people of concentrations of said dust or parasites. This can be displayed in the movement of objects, but also in the communication of force. Sometimes uh, it can communicate between each other, but it's just a sensitivity to reaction among the mitochondrion, similar to the way a hive of bees or insects reacts to each other on the body of the communicating being the hive, like the body of the person that is communicating being the hive. So. Your mitochondrions hear other people's mitochondrions, and that's why you guys communicate. That shit doesn't work well. You gotta remember, like, Luke, Leah, and all them. They're like, I think some shit happened. No. <laughs> I'm like, ha ha. I'm force sensitive. Like, I'm, I'm telepathic, telekinetic, dude. I feel every single piece of shit thing you do, and that's why people get around me and they just start getting hurt. <laughs> you did some fucked up psycho shit to one of my friends and now you're just hanging out with me and, and suddenly you feel like your body's being fucking put through some shit oh well, I'm sorry that shit's just passive with me dude maybe you're sitting there thinking about how you want to fuck with me maybe you just should maybe you should just fuck with me in a real fucking way seriously fuck it I'm gonna sit there and put fucking mental and telepathic pressure on you and telekinetic pressure on you and start fucking your shit up and you're going to sit there and feel it and be like, dude, when they figure out how to measure it and create rules about it, we'll deal, right? <laughs> when the thought police can come out and be like, bro, we fucking told you about that. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> anyway. Psychers are a psychic classic of mutants uh, native to many different lore scenarios. Warhammer, 40k, Valiant, Marvel, all that shit. And it's considered a natural occurring phenomena. Um, the body can evolve so much after which the body is made in our God's image. Always remember that if you're sentient and you have a God and you're made in his image, whatever you look like is what you thought your God looked like. People who look at Galacticus and Marvel don't know what they're seeing. There's just some guy made of energy and he just shows up as something relative to what you are. So you'd be like, oh, it's just a big strong version of me. Speaking of which, Galacticus' whole power scenario is that he's the only thing that survived his last universe. And he just goes around eating plants and shit, so. <laughs> think about that and that like and he was just a normal guy like you or me or anyone else and he just survived he was just the last guy there in real fucking ways when it was all done alright um so the body can only evolve in so much in uh our god's image and uh, when it reads the definitive collusion, uh, conclusion of what the image is um we start to, uh, like, the rest of the shit occurs in the mind and is internal. Uh, we have the body to use the tools. Now we create or use more intricate tools. As such, those of us who have the mental acuity have the ability to push, bend, or uh, warp the world around it with a thought, word, or gesture. Okay. Uh, psychers are just force powers not limited to humans and are considered a natural progression of evolution for all sentient species. Um, throughout the universe or whatever it is we're dealing with. Um, and that's just me picking up on other things out there. Uh, the, people react differently, um, and psychers are different to different things. In, in, like, lore scenarios, you gotta think about the way Marvel, like, fuck it, anyway. Eridar, um, are slugs. They're considered slugs in Warhammer. And, um, they're, they're all psychers, and they're all super strong. Humans are potentially strong, strong psychers, and um, we regulate the shit out of them in 40k. Also, we're feeding them in mass, like, go die, haha, ha, sorry. <laughs> Dude, you're a psyker? Cool, we gotta feed you to what's left of the emperor to keep his shit going. Like, glad you showed up. <laughs> um, and then there are orcs, and they're psychers too. They just be like, yeah, that shit work. Why? Because I put some spit on it. <laughs> it can work now. You can do it. We all win. But whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. okay. Um, <clears throat> as we consider, uh, like, yeah, dude, 
as we can uh, continue on, psychers and other media have other issues. But um, note that psychers are the easiest to suffer corruption of the mind or spirit through the use of their powers from uh, malignant entities, gods, mental parasites, emotional trauma, shit like that. People, people, people who got it up there to do this shit, they don't do well. They're fucking flighty and weak. Oh, man. Uh, all right. So anyway. Also understand that psychers can be uh, preyed upon and used by other psychers the way one maybe might uh, use a battery, uh, like in the example of the Emperor of Mantine and the Golden Throne, and the Golden Throne post Horus Harrisser. Uh, they have to feed him psychic energy via sacrificing psychers just to keep him alive. And with that said, what the fuck was the point of that, dude? Fuck his space travel? You gotta figure out some other shit. Yeah. That's why I go beat town with those assholes. Like, give me a mech. I don't want to die. <laughs> go be a fire team. Anyway, um, and be like, dude, why are you here? I don't know, monkey. <laughs> dude, it's all Harlequins. But you know, if you're just some average jerk, go go be a fire team. Okay, so this brings us to valiant psychers or um psychics who use psion or psionics who use psionic power and are limited uh, by personal uh, ability. Valiant psychers tend to have limited powers in comparison to others, but their environment and the habitual factors are different. Notice, um, on a nature level, Harada as an alpha kill, kills or assimilates all other psychers. He can, and most are not mature, which is like age 40 plus. Dude, in Valiant Comics, dude, Harada is a fucking psyker, and he just controls the world from his company in Japan. And it's just like, hey guys, guess what, what? Um... I'm taking your shit. <laughs> uh, I'd say this is a corporate takeover, but it's not. It's nature. <laughs> like, that's how I see it. When I see him, it's just some alpha being like, nah, dude, I'm the only guy here. That's what I do. <laughs> and he's just been wiping the other people out. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I do? I fucking, like, I've, I put their brains and body through a juicer and I dissect the shit out of them. Then I put the powers into fucking hard corpse members. And only 50% of those guys survive. Like, most of them die. Fuck it. <laughs> but you know what? Fucking humans. <laughs> uh, I hate eating psychos, but, you know, I can't trust everybody. <laughs> Dude, Harada is such a fucking psycho. All right. Um, yep. Yeah. So, I'll also notice in the case of Valiant Psychers, Psionics, that the captured Harbingers, as in Harbinger of the Future, know, know, like, know what a word means, know what people do, and know what their sheer existence is. Uh, have the powers to assimilate and be weaponized by the military of the hard corps. That's why names are so important. Does the girl have a name? Because she's going to see some people die. <laughs> uh, Harbinger attack response division, like the hard corps. Uh, these soldiers are technologically advanced, given the powers of harbingers for a limited use, although they have like a rotation of them. And uh, they, 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 they kind of do soldier things, but they're disposable, dude. Uh... Most die on implementation, and then they just throw away soldiers because you can put powers in them. Fuck it. Sorry, guys. Just remember your role as a soldier. If they tell you to go die, you go die. Anyway, um, I need some water. How long we have? We got 18 minutes. That's cool. What's the average? 15 minutes to a half hour. All right. Oh, this is the think about it page. I love this. Before moving on. All right. There we go. Uh, before moving on, there are so many different facets that go into the dynamic of the way mutants or powers develop in their environment, and evolution are things that walk hand in hand. For example, Superman, or the Ubermensch, because that's what the word means, uh, was considered the quintessential best thing to happen to his planet. Right? Because he's Superman. Uh, but regardless um, of whether you want to admit it or not, Superman's existence makes the reality or universe dystopian without him. And with him, you have to deal with things like the obsessive psychosis of Lex Luthor and other adversaries such as like Brainiac, the artificial intelligence from Krypton, clone attempts like Bizarro, who's stronger but not as smart, but you know, supposedly baseline stronger because fuck it, he's a clone. Um, Metallo, a guy who holds a personal vendetta against Superman for some other shit and is powered by kryptonite and, and, and that's just 
That's just the shit that's out there to deal with Superman being there, okay? Okay. Um, uh, and when it comes to the checks and balances of the Trinity, which consists of DC's Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, violence. Also, they, they don't like Superman and Wonder Woman doing it. And I'm like, is it because of... Like, they say it's because it's too perfect to couple and just fucks things up. And I'm like, is it because they should just be stomping the shit out of people? Have some actual super-powered violent sex? Like, oh, no, no, you know, Lois is a fail... Is, is like, is an actual wafy human. But, like, me and you, um, Diana, we can, we can really get a little rough here. <laughs> Diana, I'm like... Oh, Clark, that's so funny that you like it like that. You want me to choke you again? <laughs> you, you silly Kryptonian man. <laughs> Dude, all right, let me, let me, let me get into why that joke's so funny to me, all right? We have to understand, um, some things. Batman is just a baseline human who has comparable wealth to Lex Luthor, but doesn't attempt to one-up Superman every 10 minutes. And um, his existence, uh, he considers his, 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 him useful. You got to remember, Batman looks at Clark and is like, you're useful, dude. You're smart. <laughs> I don't have to kill you. <laughs> um, and, like, you have to remember, Batman thinks about how to kill everybody. <laughs> he really does. He's got, he's got plans. <laughs> dude. Um, let's see now. Uh, yep. Um... Batman, Batman's just like, I'm a billionaire, haha, I, I, I do like, I, I, I have lots of money most of the time, and then, you know, some of the time I just like, I just like to go out and punch people in the street and shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, um, you know, just out there fighting crime. So, with that, uh, the normal human, he is using his intellect and resources as a greater ape, uh, the tools he makes, because that's what greater apes do. They make tools, because that's what we do. We make really good tools. Wonder Woman, on the other hand, is a goddess. <laughs> and she is shaped from clay and given life as a baby by Zeus, the Greek god of lightning, as a gift to the Amazons. Okay? She is trained as a warrior from birth, regardless of gender, because of her culture. And when it comes to a knockdown, drag out fight between her and Clark, no holds barred in a serious ha ha let's see who's gonna get it fucking done way yo she'll fucking trounce clark she'll fucking be like eh, gouge your eyes snap your neck like you ever read injustice anyway um she she really will wipe the floor with clark uh and when you when you really want to break it down she's a warrior from warrior culture and he, he's just a guy from like um a uh, older version of earth so he's his his genes have been on this planet uh, for thousands and thousands of years in comparison to us. I think the concept of what a sun goes through is it goes through the bright blue point um, after like the Big Bang period or creation period to um, the uh, to the yellow point, and then afterwards we get to a low red dwarf point where the gravity is hard, and, and that's uh, and that's where we'll be at. And, and and Krypton was red was a red uh, dwarf planet uh, dwarf sun before it went, so he was dealing with heavy heavy gravity, and he was like dealing with thousands of years of evolution for it, and now he's on Earth, and we got to deal with, and he's got to deal with like thirty eight feet per second. He don't give a fuck. He don't give a fuck at all. He's like, oh. <laughs> it's 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 a weird kind of jumping when I fly. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, anyway, it's it's heavy breathing, inhaling. <laughs> um, so like, yep. Bottom line is, if you want to think about Clark versus Wonder Woman, just consider like fucking like some cave woman beating up a reporter for disrespect. Just be like, ha ha, cave woman. Oh, crunch. Oh shit, she made him eat his camera. <laughs> But warrior from warrior culture, she's built to fight things. <laughs> he's just a guy with powers that's here, and his powers allow him to act like a god. That's all he's got. Um. Okay, this brings us to Marvel's X Men. These are humans who have mutated uh, 
to develop personal powers some would consider godlike. But if you read Darwin's Origin of the Species, you understand that nature adapts and reacts to need, and that mutants in the X-Men series have to deal with a multitude of existential threats. Like, they have to deal with so much shit. They got sentinels, robots hunting them, um, friends of humanity, a human organization created to never allow mutants to observe as the dominant species, as well as aliens like the Kree, Skrull, and Shi'ar. And when those... Dude, when the Kree, Skrull, and Shi'ar look at Earth... In Marvel Comics, all they see is kids with guns in a bad neighborhood. That's all they see. They're just like, ah, it's that, ah, fuck, those guys are assholes. We, we don't go over there. They're fucking psychos. They got, like, you have to remember mutant powers range so wide because it's just, gen all right, I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Room, room, mutant powers range so wide because it's just genetic variation, like, um, being expressed. So, fuck it, it could do anything. Like, you, you never know. The the, 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 the the exponential powers are limitless. It, it, it's, it's pretty wild. Alright. Dude, I, I, the, like, I did two pages on just, like, back and forth of mutants just for examples. Because whatever. And I, I didn't even do the fun shit. Like, I used Wolverine because he's just, like, easy fucking prey. It, it really is. Alright. So, when it, um, when it comes down to it, you have, this is the algorithm. That's the right there. That's what I believe is the algorithm. That means right there. Habitat over time versus the environmental uh, environment over environmental need versus adaptability. Like right here. All right. So to understand the mutant algorithm, we have to take into factors that the mutant algorithm is a long-term hypothesis. Habitual need over time multiplied by environmental need over time. Okay. This is once again multiplied by adaptability and ability as well as the personal agency of the subject. And then this is based on hereditary time, so generations. Okay. With that said, uh, Marvel mutants start gaining their powers at the onset of puberty, puberty and usually fully develop their powers at the completion of sexual maturity, which is usually around 18 to 21. You know, seriously, like, seriously, that's when they get their powers. Like, and um, these are just hereditary gains that have to come to full fruition. Now, unlike mitochlorians, which is just a whole bunch of shit poured in you at the beginning of your conception or whatever. Uh, mitochlorians that are, like, uh, mitochondria, unlike mitochlorians, which are like things in your body that float around, mitochondria and archaea govern mutant ability when it comes to uh, the level of power. Uh, you must treat these powers uh, like um, muscles. Like you, you got to work them like a muscle, dude. You're just going to strain yourself if you do too much. Uh, and they must be uh, exercised to fully develop or strengthen like any muscle, brain, or body. Like you really got to do it, bro. You want to be smart? You got to learn shit. You, you want to be fit? You got to go do some exercises. You know what? You don't want to do some exercise? You don't want to fucking learn shit? Go learn the field. You learned both real quick, but now you're a psycho. <laughs> okay? Seriously. It's not that hard. You can... Dude, like, I, want, I, I was a, I, I was a um, dishwasher for like a couple summers when I was young. I learned so much about cooking just being there. Like, go learn the field. Don't be an asshole. Um, anyway, so mutant powers are something that should be considered a natural progression of people who have hereditary habits. All right. Uh, we'll take Wolverine as an example. He's a soldier and a hunter from a long line of soldiers and hunters. Uh, his body is adapted so much to hunting, killing, and surviving. Dude. Dude, he's, he's living with trappers out in the fucking boonies of fucking Canada, dude. People are like, dude, I want your pelts. I'm going to kill you. Man, I wish people would stop wandering my house. <laughs> it was cold, and I wanted your pelts, so I'm going to kill you. Dude, I, I, what the fuck? Did, dude. <laughs> and now, uh, I'm not going to get that psycho, but when to go sickness. Um, uh... With his body, like, they, had, he, his, his family's just hunting, um, killing, and surviving over generations. Uh, he has bone claws from his hands from da for damage. Uh, he has advanced smell and sight to hunt, and he has regenerative abilities to survive crazy shit. The regenerative abilities are so pronounced that he can survive having metal bonded to his bones and not suffer the effects of poisoning. Further, his children have the same hereditary values, but claw placement structure differs as the variation occurs. Anyway, the issue with X-23 and women, okay? 
Because this is some psycho shit that you guys do to people. Alright, uh, we're almost at the 30 minute mark. I'm gonna count it as soon as. We're, we, this is the last page and then we're done. Alright. Um. When it comes to X-23 and women, uh, we have to look at one of the overarching effects, habits, and lines of women that have been dealing with as a whole. X-23, who is the 23rd of Clodo of Wolverine, uh, whose name is Laura Kinney, was considered a viable replacement to Wolverine in a Weapon X sense. Okay, uh, Weapon 1 being Steve Rogers, Captain America, who had the Super Soldier Serum, Okay, which may or may not have been an attempt to just have a badass dude to kill things, but was supposedly also an attempt to deal with the mutant problem, because goddamn worth is the mutants a problem, okay? Um, and Weapon 10, or Weapon X being Wolverine. I think Weapon 19 is like um, Emma Frost and her clone children. Like, there, there's a lot. Dude, you'll never know. What pe dude, there's like Phantom X, there's Newt, there's a lot. Like, people, dude, dude, Wolverine tortured the shit out of Newt. He was like, hey, bro, no VC. And now anytime Newt, that, dude, think about that. Like, like, let's take a psychological moment. You to get, you get a soldier. You send him to go kill some other guys. He finds you. He tortures you. Now they send you back to your men's. Anytime somebody on your side tells you I'm on your side, you kill them because that's what they say when they tortured you. Thanks. You're one of our best assets ever. Um. Um. So we have. Um. Anyway. So she escapes from her cloning facility, captivity, or whatever. At like the age 14 to 17, we're going to say. She proceeds to just be some girl out on the street. So she's just doing street drugs and prostituting herself. And trying to live her life as just some hot chick out there. Who doesn't have anywhere to go. Because fuck you, Cloney. Um, and she likes, dude, she, she's considered one of the best. Because she's Wolverine's kid. So she just regenerates. Be like, hey bro, you been get the O-ring on that shit yet? That girl's a psycho. Also, watch out. She got trauma. She'll torture the shit out of you. Like, she got claws and shit. I got real sexy with her, and she got, she, she just, she, ooh. I think I got stabbed a little too much. I gotta go to the hospital. <laughs> anyway. But, um, like, she, she, she's through all that abuse of shit. And, like, plus, like, plus, like, dude, her fucking... Dude, because of her um, because of her training to be the next Wolverine, they just have her on trigger sense. So she's just like the bodyguard or the little girl, like, ha ha, I got one on tap. And then she smells something and rips the dude apart and just wakes up in blood and is like, oopsie, why? <laughs> They're like, it don't matter, back in your cage, slut. They're like, damn, are we going to lock that? And be like, do you know what it is to be what people would call the stupid human trick or the one trick pony? Like <laughs> uh, they do lo they no longer feed child prostitutes to black mists because of me because god damn do people with skills that care get to become problems <laughs> all right um anyway so uh these are just casual things most women do over the long term um because it like dude guys not not that you guys like the, the culture of no hymen, no diamond, and that shit is mad weird. If you guys leave the women alone, that shit will regrow real quick. Like, it's not a big deal. Although, like, a gamer girl will be like, I gotta take care of my own needs. So, if you'll excuse me. Um. So, uh, like, historically, historically, white women are just trapped in the house, and they get beaten, and they deal with rape and stuff. And then, like, the, it, like, the signs don't show until, like, long term, okay? Um, women who are of color or indigenous, um, th they don't show physical signs because they're here to party and kick ass. But um, they also react poorly and become difficult if abused in the long term, okay? Um, Asian women will respond with, this is a society, and then work the scenario until somebody dies that's fucking with them. I don't know if it's a natural ability or if something they do genetically, that just, it just works for them. People have issues, but most of, the, most of the issues people have when it comes to racial issues among women is just inherent, like, harem genetic DNA shit, being like, oh, I remember this bitch from 
that man's house when that man's house had people that would kill each other over me. Damn, this this is a problem. <laughs> That's 35 minutes we're done here. <laughs>